Hi everybody, good afternoon. It's Heidi here for Riverside Crafts and a demonstration on making a card. A very, very simple card because that's what I do, simple. But it's um, a new stamp that we've got in and we've got them in a few different sort of images. Um, and I love this one and then I went and bought another one. So um, I'm happy to share these simple designs that I've done so um, I'll give you a chance to just gather and I took my inspiration from obviously shops now are trying to get rid of plastic bags and a lot of places I know Tesco specifically because I shop at Tesco's um, you use uh, you can use brown bags instead of uh, carrier bags and things like that when you're weighing out your vegetables and fruit um, and I seem to have a massive stash of brown bags, brown paper bags um, and thought what can I do with them? Well I use some of them in my mixed media and I use them in my journals and if I'm making albums and stuff like that I try to use them up in that kind of way um, but I wanted to try and use it on a card so I decided I'd print onto a brown paper bag. So, this is the card that, that I made. Oh, there we go. And it's a hair. And the stamp is from Crafter's Companion. I'll show you the stamp in a second. It just says best wishes. Um, and because I did it on, hi Dawn, because I did it on a brown paper bag, obviously I didn't need to colour in my hair because I thought he's already got his colour. Um, so all I did was highlight him a bit with some white jelly pen and a little bit of green with my Distress ink. so I used it to paint with. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, let me show you the stamp. Put that there so I can see it. So this is the... Sorry, get the glare off it. This is the stamp set. So you also get a, a leaf, two leaf stamps with it, so you've got two little one there and one there you've got best wishes but you've also got hello as well so it can be a general one it doesn't have to be a birthday one and then of course you've got your beautiful hair um the little sentiment i used was the best wishes okay let's get started let me turn the camera down for you okay so to start off with i've ripped this was a really big jumbo sized paper bag so i've ripped just ra randomly ripped it to shape it and scrunch it up nicely. It is a lovely stamp, yes. So scrunch it up and then just flatten it back out again. You don't want to take any of those creases out because that's, that's part of its character. Okay, so I've already loaded the stamp into my stamp press. I'm just going to lay my paper in here and just let's position. So here's here's my hair. I'm going to position him on. Let's give him a little bit of space around him. And I'm also going to do the best wishes as well on the same piece. So let's flip that over so that it grabs it. And then I'm using stays on in jet black for my ink because it picks up all the details nicely make sure you've got it completely covered before you the nice thing about this is if you do miss any areas on the stamping you can always go back re-ink it because it won't move okay so turn it down press it down normally I would stand up to do this but I won't do today I'll just press hard on it so I want to just grab my paper because it's so light, it's going to go with it. Okay, and I've done it on a side which isn't Silly Heidi. It's got some sort of waxiness on that other side. So let's do it again. Because it didn't stamp. Okay. Okay, so mine didn't stamp again. Major drama. 
and gone. Got another piece of brown paper here. Let's try it on here. There we go. Let's see if you can be. Let's just move him over. Okay, let's fingers crossed it works this time, guys. <gasps> Okay. Okay, let's press it down. And it's not come out very clear, has it? Oh, goodness gracious me. Let's try again on the other side. I think it's got some wax on it or something. I've got some more here, so don't panic. Back my arm. Let's try you again. Okay. Come on, Mr. Hare, don't play up. That's better. Much better. My best wishes didn't work very well, so I'm going to just stamp that again on another little piece. And as I say, the nice thing about this is, oops, you can reposition it, etc. Where's my pack gone? Put it on there. Let's just stamp that one again. See, so nothing goes right for me sometimes as well, guys. So if it happens to you, it happens to all of us. Okay, so that's been stamped as well. Let's put that down there. Now, okay, I'm just going to trim this down a bit. So I'm using my Fiskars guillotine. And I tend to use the, so there's a, on my guillotine, there is an edge here and it's got a, a line, a raised line. And I use that line, whoops, as a kind of, space from the edge of my stamped image. Now, if you really wanted to keep this sort of more shabby chic, you could use a, a water a water pen and roughly mark around your your image and then tear it so that it gives it a bit more of a, a rustic feel. I didn't think to do that, but it is a an idea guys and whoops let's get rid of that rubbish okay and let's let's do the bottom bit okay let's move that so i've got my image there okay so all i did was i um there's my image. And if you've got any little areas where it needs to be darkened up, you can always use a, a black pen to mark it up a little bit brighter. So what I'm going to do is I am going to... I'm going to turn it round for a minute. I've got a little pot of water, just a little bit of water and my brush, and I've pre... Oops put a bit of ink on my on my uh, tile and it I'm using mowed lawn the oops gonna drop my brush mowed lawn which is from the Tim Holtz distress inks and I just squidged a bit down on my tile and with the water you can use it to paint with so I'm just gonna I don't want it to be too bright on some of the on the grass but you've got these little grass stalks. Now, be careful not to 
use your brush too wet otherwise it's going to really make a mess of the paper bag and you might end up with it sort of going right through which you don't want so I'm just painting on if you want it a little bit darker don't add so much water to it there we go And if you let it dry in between doing your painting, you can then go back to it and make it slightly darker by just adding another little layer over it. And I am by no means um, very good with, with painting. Um, I'm not very good at doing shadows and, you know, variations where the light is and stuff like that. Um, so don't think that you have to be you know a wonderful artist to do this you really don't um it's, you can do it i mean it doesn't have to be uh distress inks painted it can be um you can use your your coloring pencils you can use uh you could use acrylic paints you know it's up to you what you what you use to colour it with but you just I don't don't think you need with it being on brown paper I don't think it needs it needs a lot of you know colour on it I think it just makes it pop by putting just a bit of green on the areas where there is gloss there we go I might just make that little bit a little bit darker just by going over it with a little bit of a stronger colour there there we go so that's my grass done so let's move my tile out okay now I have got um a jelly roll pen and oops I want the eight so this one's a zero eight the securer Secure jelly roll pens. They are two pound twenty down at the shop, and it's an 08, so it means it's slightly thicker. Um, and then I'm just going to use it just to put some highlights on on this lovely little rabbit. So just a little bit. Generally, where there are little sort of black markings on there, so I'm doing it down. Just a little wiggle down his down his ears and then I'm going to do a little bit round his eye and what I will do I haven't got my black pens nearby but when I come back to this I will do a little bit of um, black just to highlight his eye and some of his whiskers are missing on on one side so I would go back and just add those in with a black pen it's no big deal Okay, now then I'm going to move down a little bit. I'm going to put a little bit of white under his mouth. And a little bit down here. I wasn't quite sure, and I don't think it is that obvious, what the flowers are that are by him. So I decided to make them look a bit like dandelion heads by putting white on them. Um, I'm not really sure what they are, but... I just felt it needed a little bit of white on them. A little bit of white round his feet. And then on our flowers. So those I just did a little a round blob on. Simple as. So obviously those of you that have done card making before with us, you know, uh, you will know of um, Crafty Lou. And she is a master of, of using the uh, inks to watercolour with. Um, and she, obviously she can get, you know, the darkness and light of all these things. But I'm not, I find it really difficult to actually get those bits. So there we go. There's my rabbit. 
Okay, so then I'm going to mount it onto this card and it's an embossed card that we've got. I think it looks a bit like a tire tread, um, but um, I'm not sure what it's called. So I've got my glue. Now I use the Pin Flare book binding glue, which is 4 99 from the shop. And I swear by it, I use it for everything. Um, it's just a fantastic glue. Alternatively, you could use um, you could use um, oops double sided tape. So I've got I have got the brown double sided tape as well. But um, it's entirely up to you. I think people have their own choice as to what adhesives they use, whether it's tape or whether it's glue. But just to show you that it doesn't, you would think it might come through the glue and, and maybe make the paper a bit discoloured, but it doesn't because generally those paper bags are fairly thick. Just make sure when you're using these paper bags, obviously, because I've just found it a problem with this particular one, um, that you haven't got wax over the top of the bag because obviously that did cause a problem it resisted so I'm just going to trim this down and I'm going to use my my edge on this again so I get a nice straight line round my piece there we go. side as well you can measure this if you prefer but I tend to just do it by this um, particular this this edge down here it's got a raised piece and I use that as the gap that I'm going to leave on my pieces right nope, I need to cut him down a bit silly me let's cut you down a bit boy helps if you know what size your card is as well so these are the um these are six by six uh they are 720 for a pack of 50 and it's the craft card cards and envelopes that i'm using let's make it a little bit narrower it does help if you know what size of card you're using doesn't it goodness me it's a little bit big for this one because I've made the um, the this part too wide around it. So just be aware of that when you're doing it. So I'm just going to stick that down. And actually, I do kind of like, I'm going to be a nuisance and do it sideways. <laughs> so yeah. There's my lovely card. She's beautiful, isn't she? And I haven't used my little my little sentiment because it didn't come out very well. Um, what I would normally do is just go over it. I could even stamp a new one or I would go over it. I have like, um, what's it called? A, used it on my other one. Secure a Pigma pen. I've got a black Secure pen. Um, which I've used on one of my other projects, um, just to go over, and some of the little whiskers as well. So that's that card. Now, I tried last night to do something a little bit different. So let's turn you back up to me for a minute, sorry. It is cute, isn't it, Dawn? Okay, so last night, I thought I want to do something that does it differently. The name of the stamp is, where are we? Meadow Hair by Crafter's Companion. So I did another one last night and I did this one on linen. Um, so this is on linen, the little embellishment, uh, the little sentiment, and this is on linen. And this one I did, I coloured in the whole thing um, and put a little button and put some string on it. And this one I used Vintage Photo, which is the, they're all distress inks from Tim Holtz. Vintage Photo for the hair. He is, isn't he? Vintage photo, mowed lawn for the grass, Victorian velvet for the ears, 
and a Posca pen in white because the jelly roll pens won't show up very well on this on the linen so I used a Posca paint pen which we also stocked down at the shop and also the Secura Pigma pen in black to highlight the sentiment because it doesn't stamp brilliantly you have the outline of it but I just had to go over it slightly on the linen just to highlight it more um, so yeah that's that's that one and as I said they do they've got loads of other um, animals on them and I think there's a cat one as well but I particularly liked there's a dog one and just before I came on I decided to have a go at the dog one so there's the doggy one she's gorgeous it was a very 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 quick make so please please be um, understanding and kind but yeah that's the doggy one and she's been done with brush cord and sta scattered straw on her body tattered rose on her tongue ground espresso for her nose and pumice stone for the bone and let me show you the stamp for this one it is gorgeous so on this one you get the doggy you get a bone a bowl a collar you get the little paw prints and then the words say home is where the dog is for forever friends and a dog is the only thing on earth that loves you more than he loves himself that's definitely my my darling doggy tinkerbell <laughs> so i hope you enjoyed it i'll show you the cards once more so you can see them again so there's the linen one okay there's the one we we made oops let's take it back a bit the lovely hair it could be Heidi the hair <laughs> and then there's the doggy one and I know I'm going to be going back down the shop and seeing what other ones they've got because the detail on them is beautiful they really are a fantastic stamp stamping people the crafters companion I really love them and and the stamps are so reasonably priced I think it was is it Caroline is it um four pound ninety something for the for the stamp I've took the price off it I think it was 4 99 I'll have to confirm that with Carol Caroline though because um I'm not 100% certain but I'm pretty sure it was about 4 99 I know they were very 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 reasonable so okay guys I hope you enjoyed that and I hope I should be doing some more crafting bits for you um I enjoy doing it. I'm not by no means an expert with crafting. Um, mind you, I'm not beading either, but I do know a bit more about beading. But crafting, I love doing. I love doing at home. Never really taught crafting as such. That's Caroline's domain and Crafty Lou and, and all the rest of the guys that do the, the card making. Um, but I can do basic stuff. And sometimes simplicity's really nice and you don't have to go overboard and use loads of different techniques and stuff so sometimes simplicity works out really well and just finding one thing that works I mean particularly I like the brown bag the paper bag one and I love the linen it looks beautiful on linen and actually if you did that on linen coloured it in and then beaded it over the top of it you could add it onto a canvas bag or you could bead it and put it onto a card so it would look stunning there's so many variations you can do with this so have fun okay guys i think that's it okay well i look forward to seeing you soon i think i'm doing one in another sort of three weeks or so and my next beading one is not next week the week after but i don't know what i'm doing okay thank you all bye bye